Mal geht man her. Joe Kennelly ist mein Name. And uh, I started in ranks. I was 15 years of age. I went in as was known in them days was an office boy. I used to deliver letters from, uh, from ranks lawmills on the dark road. Up to the head office, which was 104 Henry Street at the time. And uh, deliver stuff back down again. I worked there for a few years and uh, I remember the wages at the time was, I think it was about 15 shillings a week. And of course I used to use a, a bicycle and you get a half a crown a week, two shillings and sixpence for the, for the use of your bike. But I, I, I went from there then up into what's known as the warehouse. Uh, loading cars with, loading the trucks with flour and, and all that thing with, with handcarts and there was a man and two boys. I was a boy in a gang. And I was there for a, a couple of years and I came to, I think it was the, uh, around 18 years of age. I was promoted to men. So that, that meant I would get men's wages. And I went from there then into what's known as a packing the flour. Of, and, uh, I was there for a couple of years packing flour and then I was I, I was I went to a job what was known as the being down men. That was bagging the flour inside in the inside in the warehouse. We used to do we used to have to bag four hundred and thirty four hundred and thirty ten stone bags of flour, tear them nine high and uh that was the quarter. The you'd have to pack you'd have to do a thirty ton of flour a day. Or a shift I should say. That was my job. And I'd done that for a good number of years. But uh can you stop the minutes like that? Ranks and doors, it was kind of more or less a family job. My father, God be good, he worked as a casual worker there. He worked in the fitting shop and he used to do painting around the place. And my brother Tony worked in head office. Uh, my father was, only, was never constant there, but he was always a casual worker. I became constant and I spent uh, 31 years in ranks flower mills. Now through the 31 years I met my wife and met my hand, God be with her, and uh, we had three children at the time, and uh, three, three girls, and then after 13 years we had another, another daughter. Uh, that was four children I had. But, uh, it was a good, it was a good job and there was good money there and there was great camaraderie there and there was great people that worked there. Great people now. And, uh, there's a couple of great sportsmen worked there at the time now. Great sportsmen. There's one man that stands out in my mind was, uh, a man that worked in the Provender Mill. A man called Sean Gavin. Uh, Wobbler was his nickname. And he was a great all-rounder. He boxed, he played hurling, Gaelic football, rugby, and uh, handball. He was a, a great all-rounder in them days now. He was a young enough man at the time as well. But there were lots of other people that worked there as well. There was a lot of soccer players worked there. That I remember Paddy Hackett, he played with Limerick. He was a, he was a great footballer as well. But there was, a, there was a great group of people there. Until the, thir the 13th... I think it was, was it the 13th or the 15th of October, 1975, when they made the announcement that they were going to close and the place down. And they kind of put a bit of a gloom over the whole job. Things, in, as far as I'm concerned, was never the same again after that. We lost, the, I don't know, we lost the, a lot of the spirit out of the job, like. And, but uh, that was a tough enough time in trying to get through that until eventually it was closed down. I think it was in 52, I think it was, I'm sorry, 82, that uh, it eventually closed down, like, you know. And I remember we fought very hard to keep it open. And, but things didn't go our way, like, and we were all left down as far as redundancy money was gone. It was, uh, we never got our redundancy money. The people that was left there never got the redundancy money. Though we fought it very hard, and we had a court case in Dublin, which I attended, and, uh, as far as, can I say what I want to say here now? You can, of course. As far as, I, I, as far as I was concerned, we were sold down this money. We were sold down by a, a couple of solicitors above in Dublin. Can't mention it. No, you're fine, that's perfect, yeah. But, uh, and I was very sour over that and 
still tried very hard to try and get some bit of redundancy money but uh, it eventually didn't come like you know we didn't get it but uh, thanks for the God I was lucky enough that I was involved with the union at the time and I could see it I could see it happening I could see where the place was closing down because I used to have to go to Dublin to represent the men and I remember I was told in Dublin by the, the union officials to get the men together and tell them that the place was closing and try and make sure that we got our redundancy package in in order like you know that, that we were going to get that anyway but a lot of the boys didn't really they didn't want to believe me and I remember I made a famous statement at that time and it stuck with me afterwards I went up on the stage and I said the Pope in Rome will not keep ranks open and uh, that that part me the name of the Pope but I was to be proved right afterwards and uh, I thought if we had fought harder and done things differently that we'd have at least got our redundancy money because there was lots of men worked there and they worked there I was there for 31 years there was people who worked much longer than I did and got not neither and there was families wiped out there because as I said it was a family job people had sons worked there and there was, there was a sister of mine worked there and for years in the floor in the small package department but she was long gone before all these things started like you know but there was girls there that got no redundancy money either but uh as I say, look, it took, it took the, good, the goodness out because it was a great job and there was great people worth there now. Great people, I can remember them all. But most of them are dead now, like, you know. But uh, I suppose, like, it is good to see this thing happen and not to forget the people that worked in ranks and, you know, and uh, that, was the, that, that, was, that, that was a great, it was a great, a great fellowship there of comradeship and, you know, and there was a great, great crowd worth. I remember they started, they had a, 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 a male voice choir there and they were absolutely brilliant and they appeared in that tops of the town I think in that at the time great soccer, great football there and great sports there I remember as a child now I, there was a, 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 a sports day over in the LP YMA grounds on the Innes Road and I remember I remember it, and, and, attending that and I was only a young flesh was I was only five or six years of age, ever before I w went working in ranks. But uh, there was great memories out of it, to be honest about it, and uh, good friends there, very good friends. Um, sorry, I uh, just wanted to, how did you see, the, did you notice the decline before you were told about the closure of ranks? Did you notice the decline? Oh, I did. The decline yeah. was obvious to anyone. Obvious. Anyone with a pair of eyes could have seen the decline. Yeah. They were giving out plenty of overtime, but they were only running the place down. They wouldn't repair machinery now and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So it was obvious to anyone that, it, that at any bit of a brain at all could see that the place was going to go, like, you know. But as I say, like, I was a bit... I was going to Dublin re representing the men in a thing called the Giant Industrial Council, and I was getting first-hand information, but to be honest, some of the people didn't want to believe me. And I told them, like, that uh, it's only a matter of time. But as you know, it eventually came, like, you know, and yeah. I remember we picketed outside the gates, and we did, some, of, some of our lads nearly got to jail. Some of our members in Dublin went to jail over it. But uh, it was tough times, to be honest about it, but uh, thanks for the God we got over them, and we're still alive. Yeah, thank God. And um, as you say, it was a family, it was kind of a family community, it was a big community, the ranks. And I was just wondering, did your daughters ever work in the ranks, or were they, were they been too young? They'd have been too young, yeah, no, too young. no. There was a sister of mine, and as I yeah. said, she worked there all right for a while, like, you know. So it was a big family, it was, it was a huge community, community organisation. A big community yeah. organisation. But then during the wheat seasons, we call it, I remember one day talking to the foreman there, and he said to me, would you believe, Joe, we have 500 casual workers working today. That was outside of the constant staff. Everyone passed two ranks in them, like I think. Yeah. Most people I know done a couple of weeks or a couple of months there. Everyone it was a great job for employment at the time. And it was good employment, like, you know, good yes, job there now. It was, yeah. yeah. It was that. And um, I was just wondering, when you say redundancy money, what would you believe would have been, I know you didn't get the redundancy money, but what would you believe would have been the figure? Would you have an idea? Well, I can tell you exactly what I was uh, what I was owed. I was owed thirty one thousand one hundred and twenty pound, and I actually had that in writing signed by the the, the, the liquidator, mm -hmm. and I brought that up to Dublin, to the court case, and I handed it to the barrister, 
who am I suppose I can't name now? That's okay. He, I can't name him, so I can't know. It's up, it's up to you to name if you want, but when, when it's going public and stuff, if you don't want to, it's completely... But this man now is, is a judge now, yeah. like, you know, he's a judge now. But I remember he looked at me and he said, where did you get this? And I said to him, uh, I got this. And I said to him, of the man that owes me the money, I said to him, 100, 30,000, 120 pounds. And I remember he said to me, can I use this inside in court? That's what I brought it up for, I said to him. I never saw that man anymore. He walked out of the court, but he had to come back down to Limerick to address the men the following Sunday. And the first thing, I went up to the front of the hall, and he saw me, and the first thing he said, before we start this meeting, he says to me, now you're talking about a top barrister in Dublin. I have to make an apology to Mr. Joe Kennelly there. Mr. Kennelly, he says, I lost your correspondence. And I roared back up at him in kind of strong language. Can I say what I said to him? You, would, yeah, you, you can, of course. Yeah. You fucking edited, I said to him. There was my answer back to him. We were sold down this money in that case. They never even went into court. They settled for coppers outside the court and never even taught us. They left us standing above in, in Dublin inside in the high court and went out the door and we were waiting for the case to start. We didn't know it was over. I had to follow him out and ask him. As a matter of fact, the same day I got into trouble there, I was very nearly arrested. I ran at this man and as I said, he was a top barrister and there was another barrister in his way who was on our behalf and I hit him. He fell in the ground and it took three men to hold me in the ground. His wig went all over the place. People came out of the courthouses. I don't know how I wasn't arrested the same day. Yeah. But I was so mad like after what was after noon. It was a sellout. And so deserved. It was a yeah. sellout, yeah. yeah. I'd love to be able to mention that man now. Yeah. As I say, he was a criminal lawyer, right? And what he was doing involved in our case. Yeah. But uh, he has since become a judge. He's a top judge of Dublin today. But I'll tell you one thing, he'll never forget Joe Canelli. No. The run I ran it, I met at him. But uh, we really we really were blackguarded in that, I thought. We really were now. After all of your hard work. After years. all the hard work and yeah. the money that they made down through the years. Yeah. And we worked. Now, I'll admit it, at, at the end of, the, of ranks, it came, the job became a little bit handier. But in the early days, it was terrible hard work. We were pulling and dragging 10 stone sacks. I saw men bagging 16 stone bags of wheat. Some of the poor men, God be good to them, I don't know how they managed it at all. But in them days, big families and had to, had to get money, had to be at work and lucky to have a job. Yeah. Like, you know, it is not like the recession is there today. Like, the, the, you know, we were just lucky to have a job and you'd keep going, like, you know. But, uh, oh, and then the land was shift work. I done a three cycle shift now. My job from 6 o'clock in the morning to 2, the follow me you do uh, 10 at night to 6, and the follow me you come back and do 2 to 10. There were 3 cycle shifts, yeah. and my job at the time was to bag 30 tonne of flour a night. A lot of flour, 10 stone sacks, tear them 9 high, 480 bags. That's what it was. And uh, I done that for a good few years, a good few years. I often wonder how my life at all today. Then we worked during the, 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 during the weed season in the, what's known as the silos. And uh, the dust there was unbelievable. And them days there was no masks. There was four of us one day shoveling into a bin. And I couldn't see the man standing next to me. You could nearly buy the dust. The dust of, off, of, off of the weed. I'm sure it killed a lot of people. Yeah, you know. definitely, yeah. But, uh, lungs. Yeah, and it, 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 had to shut, it had to affect a lot of people. But as I say, like, that's my remembrance of it anyway, as I say, but the, the, the court case made me very, very sour. And I can, I, I still think about it from time to time, like, you know, and it is a good number of years ago now, like, yeah. but I know we should have got our money. We should have got, this was a multinational company, ran Swabus McDoodles, and uh, we were just, we were sold down this money, as far as I was concerned, anyway, sold out, taught lies and everything. They had the money to pay us, they just wouldn't pay it. And would you have a personal contact with the owners? Uh, would you have had a good personal contact with the owner of Rags? When in them days? When you were, yeah, when you were working there. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. We, 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 yeah, we would have been. Yeah, we'd yeah. have been. Uh, I'd have been going to a lot of meetings there. And I'm like, oh, yes, yeah. yeah. We'd have been, yeah. The local, the, the local, the local bosses that were fine. Yeah. Because the guys on top that done yeah. it, like, you know. The guys on top, The yeah. local bosses, we all got on fine with them people. They were the grandest, grandest people. Yeah. Um, I, 
another thing I was going to ask um, would there be any, any injuries uh, in the ranks? Oh, there were seven yeah. people killed in ranks through yeah. injuries, seven people killed in ranks. Yeah. Three that comes out, and we would like to mention their names oh, now, like I wouldn't know, but there was a, while I was there, I can yes. remember three, there was two young men, and, and there was a carpenter that, that, that was killed in a place called the Dock Store, and he, this man had a young family at the time, he had five or six young children that was killed in, 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 in an accident there. Yeah, all accidents, of course. Like yeah, all accidents, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a big place like right? Yeah. It was passed with dangerous, like, you know. Yes, like any other job in that area. Yeah, but those days when there wasn't safety instructions. And oh, yeah, not as not like, like today, yeah. today no, no, like, no, it was none yeah. of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um,. Would the, the pay been good? Like, would it have Well, I suppose it is, yeah. yeah. Well, you'd, you'd, you'd yeah. be, yeah, you would, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be all right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was a lot of us, but, but when I started there now that time, when I came from the, the office that time, up to the warehouse, we'd be paid every day. Yeah. I think it was 11 shillings a, a day or something we had, like, you know. Perfect. We used to work the six days that time. We'd work a half day every Saturday. But then, oh, of course, yeah. the, 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 the hours changed and it was brought back, we said, to eventually to a 40 hour week, like, you know. And there was a lot of good money here and there because of, there was a lot of overtime there, like, you know, and we, we worked double shifts and yes. all that kind of thing, like, you know. And um, did you see your brother, did he work in the ranks? Oh, he worked in yeah. the head office in ranks. Head office yeah, Tony, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, how He'd have been there yeah. for 30 years as well, now, I'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how old were you when the ranks finished up? It, it was in nine. 82, I think. 82, oh yes. 82. So that's after 31 years of... After 31 years. Of but uh, I used to, as I said to you, I used to go to Dublin to the Joint Industrial Council and that would be with the top, some of the top members of the union and the top members of ranks floor mills. But one of the top floor mills, a fellow called Gordon Bull, was asked to know when he was talking about closing the place down, what were they going to do with flour? And he did say that at that meeting that they were already importing flour in from England. The flour was coming and they were doing it on a trial base. But that was telling me like that this was going to continue. Surely it must have been cheaper for him to do that. And there's then a man by the name of Jimmy Kelly. He was a union official. He was killed shortly after in the car crash. He told me to get the men together and said, make sure you get your redundancy money because you're closing and make no mistake about it. But, uh, trying to persuade them in that like that, that a lot of people were, were even accusing me Kennelly wants to close the place down the foreman caught me by the throat I remember on the first floor of the warehouse and stuck me to the wall if you think you're going to close this place down you're making a mistake and there was any bringing back the information that I had got like you know but a lot of people didn't want to believe to put their head in the sands they didn't want to believe it because the overtime was flying there and sure how can we close down like but there was no repairs being done the mill was falling down. Anyone with a brain in the head could see this place is gone. And that's when I made my famous statement about the Pope in Rome. Wouldn't keep it open. And as I said, it stuck me with that name. Then that's what I was christened after. Still known as it, I suppose, in different circles, like you know. But I remember that time now, as you know, ranks was on the dark road. And at one o'clock, if you see the hundreds of men that would be coming from ranks, McMahon's, the wire factory, the dock, all the different places, the dock road would be covered men going home from one to two for their dinner. There was hundreds of men there. But I, I remember, of course, the dock road is a busy place now where all the, it would set to be in the But I remember walking down afterwards and you wouldn't, you wouldn't see a cat on the road. You'd see no one. But it has improved, like, through uh, all the buildings and all that, like. But in them days there was hundreds of men worked there. All over the place. The dock road. But, uh, they were the older days, as I say, like, and I think, my opinion, they were better days, and it, but there was none of this, you would never hear of drugs or anything like yeah. that, like, if I'd take a few points, and there'd be no trouble like that, and all, and all dances and that. You could walk the streets and them days. Good. I wouldn't walk the streets a day, and me one for Norman Barn, and day and night, because the place is completely different. But, uh, as I say, like, uh, it was a great place to work in. I always thought that anyway. And then, like, the... Uh, like even like around the towns and that like the dances and all that like was completely different altogether different people like you know and uh, I remember the Stella dance hall now in Tadsy St Mary's dance hall over going to these places but uh, the night of the bells the big old do over there singing and 
Ah, this kind of thing. Different times completely, you know, in my eyes anyway. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I prefer to be back in them days than I would in all, in all, the, in all the, 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 the modernization of what's happened in the city and all that. In my opinion, there were way better times. And be, I, I don't know, there was a lot of characters around in them days, like, you know, different characters in the pubs and at the rugby matches. You know them all, like, you yeah. know. Yeah. But uh, they all seem to be... They all seem to be dying out. You never hear my character around now. There was great characters in Limerick at the time, like, you know. And so the outside of Rank's activities, what you were saying there, would be the dances? They would have been, the, yeah, yeah. The weekends or the Friday night. That's it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was the other... I know you got involved in sports, especially inside Rank's. Was there other activities, like, would you have gone to pictures? Well, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And would that, that be where you met your wife? No, I met my wife, I met my wife at, uh, at, at, at the dance, the Stella Dancer. Oh, yes, yeah. That's where I met my wife, at the Stella Dancer. Yeah. And uh, she died there about, just five years ago last month, she died of cancer above in Dublin. Uh, I hate saying this, but I suppose I'll have to say it. Thank you to the, the regional hospital, they just make mistake in the Western, like, you know. To alter her gallstones with Adam when they brought her to Dublin, it was too late. She was uh, she was reeking with cancer, God love her. Died very hard. But uh, that's what I met Anne first anyway. And I remember I remember it was we were kinda of getting serious together, like, you know. Yeah. We were going together about six months and she says to me one day, What age are you, George says to me? And I said, I'm twenty, I sister. Jesus, she's only a year older than me. I was later to discover I was nearly three years older than her. She was only 17. What she done that for, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she thought she was getting a good catch, God love her. But, uh, all right, yeah, there were good times, like, good times now, like, you know, happy old times, but life is tough. You go through a lot of things in, 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 uh, in life, don't you? You do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And I suppose you pretty much prefer to be back in the days of the ranks right well I thought yeah. there were better times anyway yeah. like you know yeah. Here, here. I have four daughters now that they're done because they're all married and done for yeah. one of them the last one came along after 13 years there's a bit of a funny story to that <laughs> but I once said and this like but uh, I, I think I have, uh, 11, I have 11 grandchildren but uh, and it is, it is good to have someone around you like that uh, do you know what I mean? Yes, it is. I live in Mio now, like, you know, and uh, I can fall out with no one now because I live in Mio and I have no one to fight but only myself, like, you know. And are your children, um, are they all living around Limerick or have they moved on? I know, they're, they're, well, they've been somewhere, but there's a girl in party and there's a girl above in Ratban, Ratban Terrace, and I have a girl in Cardab and then a girl outside in Anacotti. Oh, they're like, you know, they're, yeah. they're all, you know. Oh, within driving distance, like, yeah, you know, yeah. I always get to see him and see the grandchildren, and, you know. Uh, yeah, and when you were working in the ranks, did you, um, you, at first you said you used to drive, you used to cycle. Oh, that's yeah. right, yeah. Did yeah. you ever get a car? I did, actually, yeah. I got a car, I did, I got a car before it closed down, and I was lucky enough, you know, because when I saw that the place was going to close down at my age, I knew, like, the, the, well, the, there was no work around in them yeah. days, so I was lucky about a taxi place. And I was driving, ta but when, when the ranks gate closed down, I was working two minutes afterwards, through my own initiative, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. I said, look here, I suppose I was lucky enough, and uh, I was not, I wasn't idle, like, and I was uh, driving taxis for 30 years, so, like, you know, that uh, at least I could get a few quid and provide for the wife and children, that, like. Yeah. But uh, that was only, people said I was a clever boy, I didn't think I was at all, just that I saw it, like, I saw you, it coming. You, you saw, you, know. you, you had your eyes shut. Well, I, had, yeah. I really hadn't. I didn't dig my head into the sand yeah. anyway. And the very minute it closed down, so I was working. The very minute the gate locked, yeah. I was into my taxi, like I was working away. At least I could have a few pounds anyway, yeah. like you know. Totally. Because in them days, like it, like, there was no work. I know men that, that, that finished in ranks that time. They never worked no more. Never worked. Mm -hmm. No, some of the younger guys got jobs, all right, like you know. But a lot of them, a lot of them never worked no more. There was no work there. Would that have been due to the age? Well, yeah. the age and the times there was in it, like, yeah. if you were in your 40s that time, like, yeah. you know, you had, even worked, you, you had no chance of getting a job, like, you know, there was you no work yeah. there, no, no work there, no, really, no. unless you had a bit of influence someplace, you might get a job, all right. And do you think there was a lot of immigration around the time, the closer Oh, there would have been, sure, yeah. my three sisters, my three sisters left and were only 17 years of age for England. 
They were gone, oh, gone, oh, and that's, they're still there, actually. Was that due to ranks? Oh, it wasn't due to ranks, oh, yeah, but, but due to the times that was in it. Time, due yeah. to the time of the, there was a recession going on yeah, in them days, though, yeah. but not like the recession today. Because in them days, like, you didn't, you weren't paying big money for a house for a big mortgage. That wasn't there, like. You didn't have that, was, all, yeah. that wasn't there in them days, like, you know. You didn't have all the needs. Well, you didn't, yeah, not at all. No, 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 no. Simple enough needs. Yeah, that, that's what caused that's the a, recession now. What is the cause yeah. that, that people kind of, they lost their own of themselves, yeah. as far as I can say, like, you know what I mean? Paying all this kind of money. I remember there, there was, a, there was houses being sold outside in Castle Troy, a million euros for a house, and people queued up in their cars to get their names down for a million euro house. You think, like, buy a house in Spain. We yeah. might as well get a car, get the car for the way, get one for the sun as well, so the banks have run it out. Different recession. Different, you couldn't yeah. compare the recession today now than the recession in my, in, in my younger days. Yeah. You know, you couldn't. They were both hard recessions, but just completely different. Oh, they were, of course, yeah. completely yeah. different. Yeah. You couldn't compare them, in my opinion, you couldn't anyway. Yeah. You couldn't compare them. I remember now even, them days back ago, a brother of mine, Tony, he told me he was going by in a house outside in Dora Dial. It was a new estate, Dora Dial estate. And I asked him how much the house was, and he said 3,000. So I said, you're mad. You're mad, 3,000 for a house. But, like, that was the, the, the rate in them days. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And he wasn't mad. He was cleverer than I was, because when he sold it, he got a lot more money for it. But, like, uh, you weren't paying terrible big mortgages, like, you know. No, no. People weren't up to the rise in debt and all this kind of thing. They weren't, in my opinion, no. anyway. You couldn't be up. Should there was no one to give you money in them days? No. No one to give you money. I didn't think I was ever in a bank in my life until I got, and I don't know, I was going to get a, an extension put onto the back of my house for £600. I was getting a, my brother knew that bank manager, and he, he guaranteed me. I think it was my first time ever being in a bank. We used yeah. to get paid cash and ranks, like. There was no, no yeah, checks no around that. No I said, well, near a bank, and he passed one out, that's all. Mm. Put a different time, huh? Well, sorry, what bank would have been at the time? What bank would have been here in Limerick City? Bank of Ireland. Bank the of bank Ireland, of Ireland yeah. at Holland Street. Bank yeah, of yeah, Street, yeah. yeah. Ah, so, they, so they wouldn't have had the queues now that they had Oh, today. Jesus, no, 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 not at all, no. It's modernisation that ruined this country oh, now. I think so, anyway, yeah. 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 And um, when the ranks were in business, when they were like, in their prime, was there other businesses in this area, in the uh, wheat area or flour in sorry in Limerick City was there other businesses uh, that were producing flour? No, ranks was no but ranks supplied a lot of they, they supplied on the bakeries in Limerick mm. now. And uh, there was a place down there uh Crow Mills Bakery they used to call it. They used to bake we used to bring the flour. I think it was Matthew Maguire was Matthew Maguire was the man that owned it. Yeah. But uh, we supplied all the bakers. We supplied we supplied flour all over the country, all around Clare, Kerry, everywhere. Yeah. Up as far as up as far as the north, we bought flour go from ranks, like you know, trucks good. on the road every day of the week, like you know, and uh, people coming in, of course, with hired truckmen and picking up the flour and delivering it at different places as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, like the, I can't, the, like the, the fact that people can say that the business was gone, the business wasn't gone at all. But the, 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 the ranks buried by staff will import it from England. It was cheaper and get rid yeah. of the crowd here, like, you know. There was hundreds of men that lost their jobs uh, over that time. As I said earlier on there, I remember one day, 500 casual workers outside of the constant staff working there. Jesus, the, the, there was a terrible amount of people working ranks. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I got a living out of it, like, you know what I mean? But, that went, like, and that yeah. was it then. Think for yourself after that. And in your opinion, if ranks never existed on the dock road, do you think that Limerick City wouldn't have been as much of a commercial, as much of a business uh, city as it was? Oh, no, ranks yeah. are very, very it important. And what was, yeah. what was, very, very important. It was very, very important. Very important to yeah. the people and to the, to the businesses around the place as well, like, you know. Yeah. yeah what was, of course, yeah. Business, very, yeah. very, very important. And, um... Do you have any idea of any of the big, big name bakeries that you supplied to at the time? Well, there was the People's Bakery in Parnell City. I went around to all of them, and uh, there was one in Sarsfield Street as well. Down where that little bank is there now. Yeah. There was a couple of small bakeries. There was one in Tomendier. I think there was two in Tomendier actually that we supplied as well. Coyleys, we remember Coyleys, and and Keen's Bakery was above in Wickham Street. Yeah. We supplied, we supplied the town, all, all the bakeries in the town, all the bakeries. Very big business. Oh, it was yeah. a big business, yeah. it was a big business, yeah. yeah. 
But at the time of the ranks closed down now, we're talking about the government. The government of the day in those days were uh, the crowd is gone in now, Labour and Fine Gael, they were the they were the, the they were the government of the day. But the only one of them in, the only one of them that ever tried to help us out was Jim Kimmy. He was a Limerick T D. The best one of the best politicians the country ever produced as far as I'm concerned anyway. But he was he was the only politician that stood by us to the end. And uh the transport union at the time, like they were no great help either because they didn't they didn't really they didn't stand up for us like I thought they didn't stand up long enough for us. The day above in Dublin at the court case now, they, they were there, some of them were there anyway, and uh, they just didn't talk up for us. They didn't even have the courage to tell us that the case wasn't going into court, they ran out the door and left us standing about there. But uh, Jim Kimmy was a great help to us, I have to say that now. He came down, to us because we sat in that time, we locked on the buses out. We sat in and locked the gates and let no one in. But Jim came down and like, he stood by us and all that kind of thing. Like, and he was convinced, even he said it to me, Joe, he says, I think you'll at least get your redundancy money, see, but it doesn't look like the place is going to stay open. Because there was a lot of wheat inside it that was worth about, I think it was worth about nine million pounds at the time. And sure, even half of that would have covered, the, less than half that would have covered the whole redundancies for the men that worked there, like, you know, but the ranks were selfish and they weren't going to pay the money. And as I said, they were the biggest, they were ranks for us, McDonald's, they were the biggest consortium in the country, like, you know, they had plenty of money, but they just dug in their heels and said, we're not giving it to them, and that's that. They knew, like, that we had no back in as far as I was concerned. But I remember now that time that Dick Spring came down, there was a, some come coming after the election, he was with the Labour Party at the time, and just came down looking for votes, really. But when the crunch came, there was only one still by us. He was the only man, Jim Kimmy. But uh, I suppose a lot of sour grapes over it, all right, like, you know, a lot of sour grapes. And people were very upset and hurt. And uh, we were lucky at the time, like, that was none of us paying big mortgages. Or I was living in a corporation house above in a place called Kennedy Park. And most of the lands were bought, we were living in houses in the States as well. Corporation houses in the States. So, like, there was no big mortgages, or there was no big debts around you, or paying for big cars and all that kind of thing. That, that, that thing didn't exist at all in them days. But, uh, at least I was lucky enough, as I say, I got, I, I, I got my own little business going, and I nearly retired there not too long ago. But, at least, like, that, uh, I had, had my head screwed on that way, like, you know, I saw what was coming, I said, Jesus, Joe, you better get a job, because you won't get a job anywhere else. But in, in my earlier days then, like I have to say this, I wouldn't be honest with it, I was very fond of the drink, very fond of it, and drank a lot. I drank too much, I suppose, and uh, I was lucky enough, in 1972, the June weekend of 1972, I stopped drinking, and thanks for God, uh, a day at a time, I haven't uh, taken a drink since up to today, like, that doesn't guarantee me tomorrow, but at least I know, like, that uh, for the past nearly 39 years now, I'm free of that terrible scourge, like, you know. But it wasn't easy, like, you know, and uh, things were hard, I can tell you, when the kids were young and all that, but we got through it, thanks for the God. And uh, other, other than that, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today, because there's no way I'd have been alive if I continued where I was going. And I kind of turned my life around a bit, I suppose, and I'm a bit proud of that, like, you know. But, uh, there was, I say, like, it was different times, and old port of them was very cheap in them days. You had a pound of a sunder. You had a price of 20 pints. And I could drink 20 pints, love. 20, no problem. Could that drink more if someone bought it? If someone bought it for me, like, you know. But, uh, thanks for the God, like, the, the things were good, like, and I got a many, many good years. There was a lot of this. Of course, of course, going through life, you're going to meet Knox. Deaths and all these different kind of things, like, you know. But, uh, at least, like, I didn't ever have to drink over it anyway. Yeah. And, uh, I'm still around today, thanks God, thanks for the God. But, like, ranks was a lot of, I wouldn't blame ranks now for my drink. And there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of pub scenes with ranks as well. We'd be meeting in different pubs and, uh, all sing songs of some great singers. Worked in ranks, unbelievable singers worked there. And uh, 
they'd be all sing songs and pubs and they'd be all I was enjoying it in them days, like you know, before I crossed over the line. But uh great people were there, there's no two words about it, it was great mm -hmm. people. And uh I suppose looking back and looking back on it I haven't many regrets in my life. Like like you have to go through what you have to go through, like that's the way I see it anyway. But I, I thanks for the God as I say, like I, I came around at the other end, thanks for the God anyway. And uh So um what what uh, possessed you to finish up with the alcohol? Well to be honest with you know, I'd say I got a moment of sanity. I really had Hobson's choice. It was either stop or die. That's how bad it was, like, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh I got a moment of sanity. And I knew a fella that used to drink like me and he hadn't drank in years. He hadn't drank in three years. And I went looking for him. And uh he stayed with me. And he he directed me in the right direction, that's all I can say on that side of it. But uh other than that I don't think I'd have lasted. I wouldn't have lasted much longer. And I was I was a young enough man, I said, I'm nearly thirty nine years with all the drink now. And I'm seventy four now. This next month, please God. So like uh it was great, like, and it, 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 it's great. And you, I had a way, of, I, 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 I discovered there's a way better life for me without drinking. A way, of, unbelievable different life for uh, when you stop drinking. Yeah. You know, when you get to know about it. And, because there's a disease, this, mm. this alcoholism is a disease, like, you know, and you discover this, like, and you, you have to turn your life around, and it isn't easy to do, but can be, it can be done. Like if I, when I stopped it, anyone could stop. That's the way I look at it. Like you know, yeah. that's the way I look at it today. Brilliant. And um, you say your wife was just a social drinker uh, at the time. She was never at the scale you were. Oh, never at the scale I was at. No, no, and never. Did it affect you financially? Or oh, of course. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Such yeah. Jesus, we had nothing for God's sake. Yeah. The way I was thinking, we had nothing. Yeah. It was tough, like in the beginning when the kids were young, like. Yeah. They were young enough, thanks for the God, when I stopped. And my youngest daughter, she's married with three kids now. She never ever saw me drinking. You know, never saw me. She's about, I think she's 32 or 33 years of age. She can, but the other three girls would still remember it. Yeah. You know? And like, they were only, I was just seven years or nine or something when, when, yeah. when I stopped, like, and, but they could still remember. They would often say to me, Dad, I remember the day you done this and there were any kids, like, you know? Yeah. That's that. That's that's how bad I was. I was bad, all right. In it now, in all honesty, that threw me on fire. I never knew like what was wrong with me, but I discovered it was a disease. And if I didn't stop, I'd be dead. As I say, I'm a moment sanity. A moment sanity. That's what I got. That's something to be proud of. What is of course, but I'm. But yeah, yeah. You don't have the help that back in those days, 39 years ago, you, you didn't have the help that you would now. Well, there was yeah, a bit of help there, but not as much as yeah. there today. Yeah. There's loads of help there now. There is. Like, you know. On the internet, a phone call away, in every city there's great help. Oh, there is. There is everywhere yeah. you go, like, there is, of course. Yeah, so, yeah. You, the help you had was limited back then, so... It was limited enough. It would have been now, like, you know, be limited be enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely something to be proud of, anyways. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nothing to regret. Nothing to regret. Yeah. No, 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 If you'd like to um, wrap up this interview, if there's any last thing you'd like to say to finish it up. Uh, well, really, all I'd like to say now is that I hope I, I made some little bit of sense anyway, like for what I said, like, because I give about my days and ranks and, uh, and, and my own personal life, like, you know, so like, I think you've done me a bit of love, have I? You do, you have, you've been brilliant. This is, this is brilliant now, this is a lot of information and a yeah. lot of personal information. As long as it's good to someone yeah. anyway, like, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a great window into the past. What oh, it is, of course, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and thank you very much. The interview is just finishing up now with Mr. Joe Canelli on the 2nd of March 2011 at 3 o'clock. Thank you very much. Thank you.